Hello everybody. The global supply chain is breaking down. Coronavirus is taking over and I'm back on YouTube. Big things coming this year. So I want to go over what's going to be happening with China. It might be shut for until June. I, I have some predictions here. So I want to go over that and what you could expect in maybe a, a best case scenario, a worst case scenario, uh, and then maybe in the middle but uh, this is, it's going to get worse before it gets better in all of these scenarios. So I just want to go over the coronavirus, what's happening in China, and then uh, what it would have to do if you're selling in your business or you're sourcing or you're buying or you're just living because I'm going to be covering the coronavirus a lot because I've never ran into something that uh, essentially I saw it on the 26th for the first time. I saw the chart and I just felt really uneasy because things don't go exponential like that. Uh, and I was on social media break and I said, okay, uh, if by the 10th of February, it gets to at least 35,000, I've made my own mathematical models, which I'll be sharing with you guys. I said, okay, uh, why well, have my own preparation? I mean, I've got all my, uh, I've got lots of plans in place here, uh, but it, it, I'll just show you guys the math because that's probably just the best way. You don't need to freak out, but uh, there's things to be doing. So let's go to the modes of transmissions because you need to know how a system works to understand what will potentially happen. And what is going on with this is that it is uh, just the modes of transmission is very concerning. So uh, what, you can catch it through your eyes, uh, your mucous membranes. Uh, you can get it through your nose or you can get it through your mouth. So if you touch your eyes or you touch your mouth, uh, you can get it. Uh, glasses, definitely a thing to watch out for. Uh, you know, biting your nails. Uh, we touch our face roughly 2,000 times a day, hugging people. So uh, that's going to be some of the easier ones to potentially get around. Now, this is where it's somewhat concerning. Somebody essentially, it happened with SARS where somebody had, uh, I think they had diarrhea and they uh, there was faulty piping and then that got aerosolized throughout the entire apartment building. I think 103 people got infected. Now, that was just very, they're called super spreaders. So every time you go to a public bathroom, you touch a sink, uh, you touch your something, you touch your cars, these are mainly spreading through droplets. Uh, and now these droplets can become aerosolized. Now, there was a study out saying that it can be spread. Uh, by the way, that's called fomites, where droplets will go and then they'll get onto things and then you touch that and then that is now how it gets to you. A Shanghai just released on the 8th of February that you could transmit it through aerosolization. So if you sneeze or you talk, the virus would, instead of, you know, like having to spit and then that actual like larger droplet get onto something such as, you know, a gas handle here, you would actually, uh, it would get stuck and stay in the air and then could travel much further than three to six feet which uh, a typical sneeze or a cough would do. Now, that is why you'll see videos of people spraying all the streets in China because uh, they believe that it can be spread through that, which would uh, explain how it is going so viral so fast. Now, back when I saw this uh, exponential trend on, I think it was at 6,000, I immediately said, oh no, this is bad news of the bears. And uh, essentially my breaking point was 35,000 people. Uh, and then uh, we're taking a look at some of these models here. Now, these are as of, uh, this one is an update for today, but we had 40,000 confirmed, which was beyond my level of comfort. And then the suspected are actually included as well. Most people don't know that. And then there's also quarantined, which are potentially in it as well. When you add all those together, you get 250,000 confirmed today. That's a lot of people. So we've got all these different modes of transmission. Uh, now, you know, just everything you're touching on the daily. Living for nine days on a surface is extremely dangerous. So this was actually present in SARS, which, you know, it didn't really turn out to be much. But the problem here was it was SARS. You would only spray when you were symptomatic and it had a long onset. So it was easy to find through contact tracing who had it. The study here was essentially 50% of infected patients resulted from asymptomatic spread. So there are some very mild cases that look like the cold and people are spreading it through that. So it can live for nine days. People don't even know they're spreading it. They're hugging, they're kissing, you know, they're doing all this sorts of stuff over here. So essentially they're spreading through all those means and they're unaware here because they don't have symptoms. And maybe in here and here, they just have a light cough and you know something. So they're not very aware of this and they start to become more suspicious and the whole overall disease 
The overall disease length, which is the most dangerous part here, is that it is roughly 27 plus days. People don't typically die until, I think my median was about 20 days on average that I've calculated out here. So throughout this entire time, you're, you're infective until you either recover or after, and you can spread it through fecal matter, you can spread it through uh, droplets, you can touch. There's so many different ways uh, that this can happen. Uh, now, you could also be spreading it after you've re seem to have recovered, but you're still shedding virus. Now, this is a lot of people that is, you know, 250,000 plus people that are infectious to date, and they're infectious for a very long time. There's actually a study that showed that 44%, which of these studies was it here? It's one of these, I believe it's the second Lancet study here, where 44% uh, were spreading to healthcare workers or people in the hospital. So we need those medical workers to keep us safe. And if they're getting infected as well, then it's just very hard to stop. So the mechanics of the system is very easy to spread. Then additionally, what is concerning is this entire life cycle. And typically it's at the very end where people are seen severe and they're aware that, hey, I have a big illness. Uh, people aren't actually going to the hospital on average until uh, after here, we have seven days where they are at home and uh, kind of suspicious. Five point days, two days of incubation where you can be spreading. And I have a documented case where it was less than 23 hours of getting it that they were able to spread it asymptomatically to another person in a German study. So, uh, how can we possibly stop this when we don't know that we're sick without the entirety of society not touching and doing things on a daily basis? General hygiene will bring us far, but I do not think that it is going to bring us far enough. There's so many social stigmas, such as shaking hands, hugging, going to see your parents, your grandparents, like when you know you're sick or going into work. To get out of work, a lot of times you need a doctor's note in the United States. and people don't want to pay that copay or if you go to the doctor when it's spreading everywhere then you're also very likely shown to get sick so all of that leads me to believe that when you look at what china is doing in one of the most totalitarian places with draconian measures of 400 million people they are still spreading like wildfire uh, some of this math here will actually show that a two percent death rate there are actually much more cases than expected uh, my model here shows that at a 2% death rate, we're actually at uh, roughly 390,000. And some of the top uh, disease experts have similar models. Some are worse in that number of cases and some are better. Uh, you actually want that case to be higher because we do not want a high fatality rate. A 2% is actually, I have another video on that of why 2% is very dangerous. This is not like the flu. This is not like anything we've ever seen before. Now, your odds of dying are probably not very high, but it does have, on the other hand, this is the biggest problem, 20% hospitalization rate required. Well, 80% are mild. So those 80% are going to continue to spread it. But then those 20% do need to get help. They need to get help to stay alive. And when we get that breakdown of the medical infrastructure is where we get uh, some of those problems. So let me pull up a chart here. So here I have a chart of if essentially 20% of the population were to get infected, uh, which is a not unrealistic uh, realization to have. Some global disease experts uh, are saying that we could get upwards of 60% because the uh, spread rate is so high. Uh, on average, somebody who has the disease spreads it to two to five people. But these are the people that would be getting it. That would be 13.8 million people in the United States. And we, we only have 960,000 hospital beds. And then many of those are occupied. So if you were to actually look at free hospital beds, in the United States, that's all that we have. And those people need that help to stay healthy. So this could be a potentially very dangerous scenario in which we have increased death rates then beyond 2% because of that. And unfortunately, uh, most of those free hospital beds because of the flu are actually taken and at full capacity because we have a bad flu season. So if this were to break out soon, uh, bad. If it, you know, perhaps there's ways that we can get beyond this, but I'm just focusing on the reasons why of why it potentially could not be contained in this video. There's still possibility that, and God, I hope that we can contain it, but I, I would say that I'm probably going to be one of the first people to come out and say that we are not going to, very most likely. I just cannot see any really scenario where you take into account, like, look at how many people are infected. Uh, even if you were just go by the Chinese people chart here, so uh, they have their confirmed cases, 
even as of a day ago. Confirmed cases 40,000, 23,000 in suspected, which are basically just not tested, uh, but they have it. They have all the symptoms. They have contact tracing. Then you take into account over here quarantine uh, then also, and these people in quarantine now, they're all getting put together. And so if one of them has it, they're all going to spread it to each other. So roughly that alone. So basically you get two to 50,000 plus, and then there's of course those that are incubating and not in quarantine that have it as well, bringing us to 400,000 people. So how are we going to stop that when it lasts for 30 days? And a majority of them have just received it recently. This is unfortunately not likely to happen. The people need to take this seriously. If we could, we're right on the brink of stopping this because at its current rate, it's spread and everything. Many disease experts, like we are about a week away from a million and beyond a million. And if we get breakouts, asymptomatic transfer in multiple countries, which we are seeing on the cruise liner, which has 136 people on that already, and they're not even testing them all. They said that they couldn't test them because it would be too hard to test them all. That just goes to show how this disease could be much more widespread, but also less severe. Because the more cases we have, the lower the death rate, and then it's not an issue. Like we don't worry about the flu on a day, yearly basis. It happens, we all get used to it. But a 2% is much worse. And that is something that we do need to worry about. And it will have, just because of that hospitalization rate is the key. I'll go over the further implications in a future video, but I just wanted to put this out there quick as um, I've been thinking this for a while and my breaking point was 35,000 by the February 10th. And I have posted this now and I will be going, enjoying beautiful Northern Minnesota and explaining this all more in depth, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. So this is showing it SARS, swine flu, NCOV. These are off the chart numbers and we should not be taking this lightly. So please just wash your hands. Don't go out in public too much and just be careful around elderly people and don't worry, uh, just be prepared because this is a very likely scenario. Even if it were a 2% chance of this happening, you buy insurance for things that happen less than 2% of the time. And this would definitely be worth having insurance for. Don't panic because that's going to be the worst part of it. The actual deaths will not be the issue. Uh, it'd be more of the economic, the societal, the panic. So if it's going to happen, well, might as well just be prepared. And then we can all work through it together. And we come together as humanity. We will get through this and it will be fine. But it will be a big battle for us. Uh, and it is, I would say, more likely than not. These numbers, of which, by the way, how many people are infected? You know, so I was showing, uh, you know, 250 to 400,000 at least. The number of people that are not spreading the disease anymore is 4,189 plus 910 that have deceased, plus whatever there was in the most recent day, comparatively to a potential 250,000 infectious to 400,000. This is unfortunately not likely with all the measures that China took and everything. And we're seeing spread everywhere. Unfortunately, just going to be the one real voice in the room and say that this is probably happening. May, there may be hope in these doctored numbers of just confirmed serious and that the daily rate is going down. I just want to say, look at what they do, not what they say. There's never been something like this in history and never such extreme measures taken. And um, they locked the city down on somewhere in here. Uh, and I believe the amount of that had died at that point were like 100. You don't do that for 100 people uh, unless you know some mathematics behind it. We are yet to know of the fatality rate. This is the one upside, but we know that this the spread is not stopping. Anybody who says that it is is wrong. We want to hope that it's going to work, but I'm, well, I'm betting with how I'm preparing, but this is definitely to be taken seriously. Well, this was a quick dump video as I go and enjoy nature up north where nobody exists <laughs> with my wife and my dog. I hope that you all enjoy your weekend. Don't worry because if it comes to your town, just make sure you have a good immune system. That means don't worry. Have your stuff clean. Meditate. Do yoga. Enjoy life. You have car insurance. You have life insurance. Buy some food insurance. Buy some stuff that you would use anyways. Just buy it a little bit ahead of time. If you're not sure, the global supply chain is going to be breaking down here and we're going to be have supply shortages at some point most likely here so you want to have food you want to have water uh you want to have cleaning products uh you know just that kind of stuff and then just go on with your day's life as it is uh I, at this current death rate unless you are a uh, vulnerable class to this um you know just be cautionary but you're if you're gonna get if it's going to spread you're gonna get it odds are and like 
you know, you could be extremely scared and of getting it and then get it still. Or you could just take precautions and just, you know, do what you can to improve your immune system and get know that you're probably going to be just fine. When you look at your you know, a majority of the deaths are in those with pre existing conditions as well. So and I believe that it's even lower than one percent potentially. So that rate is really not that bad. I mean it is societally and on the hospital system, but we all gotta fight it together. So the best way to fight it is hygiene and your immune system. Because when you are immune and don't have it, you can help others. And if we all do that, then it doesn't it isn't a problem. And we don't even have this problem. So that advice wins in every scenario. The only one that does not is to ignore it or to panic. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions, comments, uh, and things that you want to know more about. I have a lot that I want to share on this, but I've got to get going. So I will hope this was somewhat helpful. And I just wanted to put this out there because I've been doing this for a while and behind the scenes. And I felt that somebody in the world needed to say this, that it um, prepare. This is most likely going to happen. I just want to be on the record of saying this for historical purposes and for preventative purposes, because even if it saves one potential life, that I have to post this. Even if it causes some people to panic early or whatnot, that is a cost benefit I'm willing to take because we need awareness. We do not need denial. This is not a, oh yeah, somebody else will solve that. No, we all have to solve this. Uh, and so we all have to be aware of the potential risk here. We all have to just get prepared now.